So I'm using some slides because I've got some pretty pictures uh, to show you about um, what rewilding is. So just a brief introduction to rewilding Britain. We were established uh, about eight years ago now with, and it's kind of does what it says on the tin. Our aim is to um, to rewild Britain or at least uh, part of Britain and to promote that and support people who are rewilding and influence those and mainstream rewilding just in, in the way that the land and sea is, is managed. Um, so what is rewilding? Well, um, rewilding is the large scale restoration of nature, eventually to the point where nature can take care of itself, but also take care of us because nature is our life support system without nature we would have no life um, and people are very much part of nature. So that's around, um, uh, uh, so it's it's in a sense, uh, as Alicia said, it's, it's much about rewilding people as about um, rewilding nature. And we have some principles of rewilding at Rewilding Britain. So rewilding is different from, from other conservation practices because because it lets nature lead and it's around, it's about reinstating what we call natural processes. So those free flowing rivers, um, those dynamic mixtures of predators and prey. Um, um, so we want to see re-wetting of our peat bogs and meandering of rivers and those species that we've lost back in the ecosystem like beavers or, or even glowworms or tree frogs or um, alpine plants, just that abundance and complexity, that web that, um, of nature that, that we've lost in Britain. And, and it's pretty shameful that we're one of the most nature depleted countries on earth. Um, so it's around working at nature's scale, it's around letting nature lead, but it's also about supporting people and nature together. Um, and so for us, it's about communities and how communities interact with uh, uh, um, and make decisions about the land and the sea and ensuring that that helps to create a, a sort of just transition towards more resilient nature based economies in our coastal and rural areas and that that is established for the long term. Um, so and why does it matter? Well, um, Rewilding can help draw down carbon from the atmosphere. We know that it could, if we rewilded 30% of Britain, the natural grasslands and, and woodlands and uh, dynamic habitats that would return can suck carbon out of the atmosphere equal to about 13.5% of Britain's annual carbon emissions. So it can make a significant contribution to the climate, uh, addressing the climate emergency, but also addressing the, the climate change that is already built in. So we've um, calculated the fifth, the fifth of species would be saved uh, if we were to create continuous corridors into which they could move and adapt as the climate changes. It can also support more diversified, what we what might call nature-based economies. Um, so in the net rewilding network that we've established, more than two thirds of the projects report a positive impact on local businesses and communities. And rewilding sites can demonstrate um, a 65% increase in jobs and local livelihoods. And we all know after the, particularly after the pandemic, um, how important nature is to our human well-being and our health and our mental health. That contact and connection with wilder nature uh, is, is vital to human beings. Um, but it also provides us with flood defences and clean water and the air and life support systems on which we depend. So it matters a lot. Um, wait a minute. So what does it look like? Well, I mean, this is a scene um, in the uplands of, of, of Britain that is quite common. You might recognise it. Um, very little diversity of species. Um, and what we'd like to see, uh, hopefully, that, yep, um, uh, as you can see, lots of muir burning and moorland burning, um, Sitka spruce plantations. What we'd like to see is that sort of roughed up around the edges so that the, the rivers can start to meander more and the erosion is um, um, uh, restored and species are returning. And uh, there's a more dynamic mix of habitats and species 
Um, there's more trees and natural woodland and native woodland. Maybe even our rainforests are returning. We've got beavers in the wetland down in the valley bottoms. We've got species like wildcat back and capercaillie and, and maybe even lynx hanging around in the in the edges of the woodlands. Um, but we've also got people in this landscape. There's um, uh, farming and horticulture potentially. There are grazing animals. Um, as you go down into the towards the, com the community that you can see at the bottom of the valley, you've got schools um, spending at least a day a week out in in the nature on uh, on their doorstep. You've got um, flood mitigated. You've got uh, down further down that valley, maybe towards the coast. You've got salt marshes emerging, protecting our um, um, coast from erosion. Um, so it's a sort of much more dynamic. Um, a picture, but there's it, where there is uh, a much closer relationship between uh, the people uh, and their livelihoods and nature. And so that's why at Rewilding Britain, we like to see 30% of Britain rewilding. And I'm going to explain a bit what I mean by that. So lots of our leaders around the world have pledged that they would like to achieve 30% for nature by 2030. Uh, a lot of that is sort of words and hot air and people saying that they will create national parks, not necessarily actually going to do something about it. What we'd like to see is a process, almost like people coming together, maybe through citizens assemblies, um, to, to decide what are we asking of our land and sea and to recognise that we need nature um, for human health and well-being and, and, um, and that actually we can rewild across a spectrum of rewilding, maybe some of that area would be w larger, wilder areas um, where nature is at its wildest, but other areas where there are more livestock um, that are playing a role in a, 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 a sort of pro a proxy role as if they were wild animals. For instance, we used to have aurochs in this country, which were in effect wild cattle. So. We can still have cattle in that picture just playing a, a, a much more natural role. We can still have some forms of forestry that mimic natural processes. Um, and we think that as a nation, this could support both our health and well-being, and, but also the livelihoods of communities, but that communities need to be part of that decision making and um, should receive benefits from that. So. Like Alicia said earlier, we think now is the time to act. We've got a climate and ecological emergency. We'd like to see uh, us decide, come together and decide as a nation that rewilding is an important part of our, of, of our future. And we'd like to see locally led plans um, that uh, where people come together at the local level to decide what, what their area should look like. That might be um, in, in our urban areas, um, people coming together to decide to set up neighbourhood rewilding groups and maybe link in with their local park and their local council and look at rivers that might meander out into the countryside so that people could have a physical connection through that wild nature out into the countryside. Um, we'd like to see our amazing species return, um, like We've seen um, white-tailed eagles return, for instance, and beavers, but there are a, a, an amazing complexity and abundance of species that um, should be in this country. And we've either lost or are so depleted that um, they're all, all, on the edge of extinction. I don't know if anyone um, has see, seen some of the nature programs that have come, uh, like Wild Isles. Uh, you know, we have an amazing uh, natural heritage in this country, and we can see that restored. But we also have the ability to transition rural and coastal communities and livelihoods so that, they're, that they uh, allow nature to thrive alongside uh, vibrant communities that are prospering, that schools are, um, uh, are being sustained, that livelihoods are being sustained, um, and that communities are much more involved in the decision making about what happens to the land around them. So we, in the rewilding network that we have established, for instance, we uh, have some network members that are community-owned rewilding projects like the Langham Initiative in Scotland and like the um, Coast Initiative, which is a coastal community on the Isle of Arran that has decided to rewild their seas 
both for the benefit uh, of nature, but also benefit of that community. So we'd like to see a lot more of that. And we'd like to see rewilding mainstreamed just in the way that we uh, manage the land and sea in Britain.